wish to convey my thanks for observing 16 days of activism against gender-based violence by different NGO, INGO and government sector with the support of Refugee Relief and Repatriation Commission over there in Cox's Bazaar and Ministry of Women and Children Affairs. This year is the 30th anniversary of observing activism of gender-based violence globally. Every year, around 190 countries observe this program with due manner in order to manifest the importance, implication, and impact of violence against women in the society and also in economy. Orange the World is a global slogan to address violence against women. Orange is used as the unifying color throughout all its activities. It is a symbol of brighter future from violence against women and girls where male and female will be free to enjoy equal rights and privileges. Actually, violence against women and girls has its three dimensions. Number one, regulatory frameworks. Number two, enforcement. And number three, sensitization. In this perspective, government alone cannot eliminate gender-based violence. It is not possible for any country, particularly when it is the question of mass sensitization, awareness building, changing the stereotype mentality prevailing in the society. It needs to be addressed from all sphere of the society, government, NGO, INGO, civil society, political leaders, religious leaders, youth and women activists, and media need to work on this matter simultaneously and coherently. Actually, finding the importance of the joint effort, United Nations Secretary General call upon to everybody stand against gender-based violence, which he called Unite by 2030 to end violence against women campaign. In short, Unite campaign. Government of Bangladesh is firmly committed to end any kind of discrimination, including violence against women and girls. Number of related laws, rules, policies has been enacted to address this issue. Also, national action plan has been formulated. 2021 marks the 30th anniversary of the global 16 days campaign to raise awareness around violence against women. Unfortunately, violence against women is prevalent in all communities around the world. The refugee camps in Bangladesh are no different. Over 50% of the 900,000 refugees in the camps are women and girls. Consequently, preventing and responding to violence against women has been a priority for the government of Bangladesh and for the humanitarian community. From solar streetlights, to training on gender-based violence, to safe spaces for women, to medical care and legal support, we are working closely with the Rohingya communities to combat this crisis. We are also working closely with Bangladeshi communities around the camps that are facing similar problems. Preventing violence against women is only possible through the collective action of the government, the UN agencies, the international and Bangladeshi NGOs, and the donor community. And I'm proud to work with such committed individuals and agencies who work tirelessly on this issue. Another pandemic, COVID-19, has presented us with new challenges, but also opportunities. When the humanitarian community had to reduce our footprint in the camps due to the pandemic, Gender violence increased sharply. In response, we saw courageous members of the refugee community step up to help prevent violence in the camps. They were trained by the UN agencies and the NGOs, but they worked almost independently. This reaffirmed that refugee communities are at the forefront of preventing violence in their own neighborhoods. Their strength and perseverance must be recognized. As we commence the 16 Days campaign, let us commit to working together to combat violence against women and to ensure that those who are forcibly displaced are protected at all times. Thank you. My name is Rosalinda Raphael, the head of the UNFPK sub-office in Cox's Bazaar. Since 2018, I have been actively involved in ending gender-based violence and through our gender-based violence in emergencies program covering different needs and risks of women and girls from the Rohingya refugees 
and surrounding uh, host communities. Currently, UNFPA is supporting 29 women-friendly spaces and 10 women-led community centers in the refugee camps and surrounding host communities. Furthermore, UNFPA supports 22 health facilities in provision of integrated sexual reproductive health and rights and gender-based violence services. Additionally, UNFPA leads the gender-based violence uh, subsector comprising of over 50 humanitarian actors. Through the UNFPA leadership, I have been overseeing the cost of the gender-based violence program in Oxus Bazaar through increased funding towards programs for affected women and girls and increased service points and implementation of prevention services that transform discriminated social needs. I commit to continued advocating to end all forms of gender-based violence in Cox's Bazaar through formulation of policies, prevention and response services in both humanitarian and development. Hello, greetings from Cox Bazaar. My name is Ita Schütte. I am working for the United Nations Refugee Agency and today I would like to share with you the perspective of Rohingya women and girls who are dedicated to prevent and respond to gender-based violence in the largest refugee settlement in the world. The risk they face for the activism made it impossible to show their faces in this video, but their messages scream just as loud. Women are going door to door to share information and prevent family violence. They raise awareness about the risk of child marriage. And when they hear of violent incidences, they immediately take action to protect women and refer them to places where they can receive help. They are breaking the silence and they are speaking up to end violence. They are teaching children and others to respect each other. By working in their communities, they feel empowered and more independent. When we asked women and girls what they need to further prevent gender-based violence, they said, more light in their blocks as they fear going to the washroom at night, access to education as many cannot even read and write, more safe spaces and time to learn from women with other experiences. To stop violence, they ask for education opportunities for all and skills development for women and girls to enhance their independence. Refugee women and girls are at the forefront of movement to prevent gender-based violence. UNHCR commits to provide them with what they need, from more light to more learning opportunities. Raising awareness of the communities, both in uh, host community and Rohingya, through our uh, partners and volunteers, and mainly they are working in daily basis with their groups. There are more than 170 groups of men, boys, uh, girls and women that are uh, working and uh, on, on, on GBB further with the committee after they are receiving in weekly the, the, the uh, information from our volunteers. And then, of course, we are also building capacity of uh, police, both district and armed police battalion, on uh, gender, uh, gender responsive policing and, and how to deal with GBV cases. Uh, uh, about, and of, of course, as a prevention, we have also uh, livelihood and life skills activities and education that are ongoing in both communities. Regarding protection, we are um, working, this is third year, with armed police battalion. Uh, already uh, 60 women police deployed to serve Rohingya women and girls 24-7 uh, and uh, there are uh, six women and children help desk. Hopefully by the end of the year we will have 10, uh, 200 women deployed women police and in the meantime we are also building capacity of, of other top management. And thirdly, it's uh, in daily basis our volunteers are uh, identifying the cases, GBV cases, and uh, they are supporting with referrals and by reporting to the camp management, the same with, with our gender officers. So in total, uh, all our intervention is around 
around the protection of women and main target group are survivors of GBV and potential survivors. Hello, my name is Rebecca Rachel Apollos. I work here in the World Health Organization Coxis Bazaar Emergency Sub Office and today I would like to talk to you about our work with integrating the needs of women and girls in the healthcare facilities in the Rohingya camps. Globally, WHO plays a key role in responding to violence against women as a public health and gender equality issue. Very often, the health workers are the first line support for GBV survivors and they play a significant role in providing life saving services, including mental health, psychosocial support, as well as making the necessary referrals. In Cox's Bazaar, WHO is strengthening the health system and building the capacities of medical workers and making sure that they provide services to survivors, making sure the services are accessible, they are confidential, age-appropriate and very compassionate. Our tangible commitment is to ensure that the health professionals are equipped with the knowledge, the skills and the protocols that they need to actually identify women and girls who have been subjected to violence and providing the support that they need. GBV response and GBV risk mitigation lies at the core of our programming so that we are able to meet the needs of the survivors. Join us and help end GBV together. Hello everybody, this is Majid, the Chief of the Field Office, UNICEF Coxes Bazaar. The gender-based violence is a problem all over the world, including in Bangladesh and in Coxes Bazaar. GBV physically, socially, and psychologically affects not only the affected person, but also all the members of the community and the household. Each one of us has a responsibility and a accountability to end the gender-based violence. In UNICEF, we are investing in all three pillars of the programming to prevent, mitigate the risk, and to respond. This currently is being done by provision of a safe space to the women and girls in the camps in an environment where they can share their thoughts and ideas and receive services without having a boy or a man around them. We also provide for them in the multiple postnatal, the children and adolescents, they receive a package of the service where this includes the psychosocial side. In future, starting from January, we are focusing on community-based intervention and we do both of them are community Thanks to all the workers, UN agencies and NGOs for this partnership. And once we get our hands together, I am pleased we can end gender-based violence. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Neil Ali Azgar. I am head of staff office of UNDP Coxes Bazaar. UNDP has been working in Coxes Bazaar uh, for both Rohingya and host communities in different sectors. Uh, UNDP programs actually uh, considers the prevention and response to gender-based violence as a key factor, supporting legal machinery with better capacity for faster disposal of cases and promoting alternative disposal mechanisms when appropriate. Training law enforcement officers, community volunteers, community policing forums, judges and prosecutors. UNDP also established women-friendly and survivor-centric police facilities in Cox's budget. UNDP is also committed to preventing and responding to domestic abuse or other forms of gender-based violence that affect UN personnel and eligible family members, including intimate partner violence. UNDP is fully committed to expand its efforts on the prevention and abuse of gender-based violence at the community level. Extending support to gender-based violence survivors through legal aid. Engaging men and boys in the discussion of preventing gender-based violence through challenging harmful social norms. Working with religious leaders and educational institutes on gender-based violence uh, prevention. 
investing more in holistic empowerment of women and girls, supporting security forces and other service providers for fast track services for gender-based violence uh, survivors. UNDB also expects better coordination among all stakeholders working for the host community and Rohingya communities. Please join us and help to end gender-based violence today. IOM is committed to ending gender-based violence. We're doing this through our three pillars. These are risk mitigation, prevention, and a survivor-based approach. And we are doing our best through these three pillars to provide a comprehensive and integrated approach to gender-based violence. All gender-based violence survivors have the right to receive support, and that can only be done through a multi-sectoral partnership with all the organizations involved. IOM is also mobilizing resources to further strengthen our programs to mitigate, prevent and respond to these instances. My priority commitment is to ensure that gender-based violence risk mitigation is integrated through all of IOM's thematic areas of work for a GBV-free environment. Good morning, my name is Sharmila Pillay and I'm the Education Sector Coordinator for Cox's Bazaar. We are committed to create more awareness, meaningful awareness with the community, with parents, especially with men and with boys, trying to have positive masculinity where we have support so that we can build up women's leadership at the community level, especially in and around learning centres. We would need more orientation, especially to make referral pathways more functional and meaningful. I am committed to see women's leadership actually succeed at the community level. And this would only be possible if we have equal representation of women working hand in hand or side by side along with men to make their voices heard and their opinions matter in society. And that is what I am committed to. And that is what I would push for with all my implementing partners at the education sector. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Marco De Gaetano. I'm the head of office FEO in Cox Bazaar. Uh, Gender-based violence has a devastating impact on uh, agricultural productivity, nutrition and food security as it um, undermines the capacity of women in engaging in any related uh, agricultural activity as well as their health and resilience. Therefore, FAO tries to address the root causes of gender-based violence by promoting uh, gender equality and women empowerment across our intervention in order to challenge existing social norms. FU is improving capacity of vulnerable women by engaging them in decision-making process, linking them to the market and sustain their income generation activity. FU is committed to end all forms of gender-based violence by improving human access to productive assets, skills and knowledge. Let's work together to end the gender-based violence now. My name is Anna and I work with the United Nations in food security sector. Today I'm looking to tell you about my work and how we integrate the needs of women and girls. GBV is real, it takes many forms. It's not only physical but also sexual, emotional, psychological but also social and economic. We engage beneficiaries in livelihood activities. Join us and help and GBB together. Understanding gender is central to any WASH program, not only in how we design and how we implement, but also how we listen to and understand the needs of the community, how we engage with that community, and how we try and bring around the social and behavioural changes required. 
This year, in support of our protection colleagues, we were able to make provision of menstrual hygiene materials to transgendered persons, those living as a male but having the female biological needs. We continually strive to improve the access to wash facilities for those in need through the provision of women-friendly wash spaces and improved access for people with disabilities. We also try to better understand the barriers that prevent adolescent girls from accessing the most basic of wash services. We look to the future for intersector collaboration on menstrual hygiene management. We recognise menstrual hygiene as an individual with individual needs. We will view menstrual hygiene through the lens of protection and sexual reproductive health, but with the support of child protection and education, we will address the needs of premenstrual and adolescent girls. Let no female be left behind for the basic needs of menstrual requirements. Action must be taken now and at all levels. We must be part of the solution. This year, WASH sector has prioritised gender and disability, not just through programming, but through targeted training for partner staff and securing a dedicated gender advisor through the Gender Hub. I'm the co-chair of the Gender and Humanitarian Action Working Group and the head of the Gender Hub from UN Women. The data revealed from WHO in 2018 showed that one in three women across the globe they have been subjected to physical or sexual violence by their partner and non-partner. There are 137 women who are killed daily by their partners or a member of their family. The Global 16 Days campaign is the call for elimination of gender-based violence. This is the 30th year mark of the campaign and the theme for this year is Orange the World and Violence Against Women Now. This campaign is based on feminist values, human rights principles, and a belief that a world free of violence is possible. The Gender and Humanitarian Action Working Group continues to strengthen the accountability and leadership of all humanitarian actors to eliminate gender-based violence. Let us continue our joint efforts all year round from 16 days to 365 days of activism to advance the human rights of women and women. My name is Sofia Canovas Pereira. I'm the Jewish Subsector Coordinator in Toxic Bazaar, operating within the protection sector work across all humanitarian sectors to help GA together in the world's biggest refugee camp and affected coast communities by the influx of Rohingya refugees. I coordinate over 50 humanitarian actors to help GV together through prevention, risk mitigation and response to put GV at the center of the humanitarian response and a survival center approach in our core work. I commit to ensure that through our gender-based violence sector coordinating bottom-up approach, we end gender-based violence together with other humanitarian sectors and continue building local ownership to capitalize on existing infrastructures and increase the participation of those at disproportionate risk of gender-based violence.